do the test, and we could do a bit of a class after, but quite a few people actually do the test somewhere else down the road and they get extra time and everything, so it's difficult to coordinate things. You could probably do with a, an early afternoon off, because after a test your brain probably isn't that good for sucking up more stuff. So anyway, we'll do that. The test, as I said, it'll last, I'll talk more about it later when maybe more people are here. Um, an hour-ish. If we do try to be here on time, like I had an idea before, and here we are, it's 22 already, and it was partly my fault, but still there's an awful lot of you who haven't made it yet. Because the test will start on time, so if you're late, you'll miss chunks of it. I've just got to try and kill that light, because I said, don't think that it's too bright. don't know if I can. Ta-da! See? It's good. I should charge up for it. Yeah. But you've got, to, you've got to yell at me if things like that are happening, because I'm I, just lucky I noticed it. Normally I wouldn't. So, um, Raj has said he's one of the, the, the big superstars. I think the most kind of user friendly of these early people, as I mentioned. Well, Compact is really nice, and it's, but some of it is almost more about the symbolism and the extra levels of meaning. And Van Eyck is rather formal, big grand manner, I guess you could call it. And then along comes Raja, and we saw something like this. I mean, it's very kind of put on our level in a way. As I said, very much mother and child rather than just Madonna and mother and baby rather than just Madonna and child. So that's rather nice. Plus the, the fact that maybe everybody seems to want this to be a self-portrait, which is nice because, again, he's put himself into the context of St. Luke, the artist. Painting the Madonna or drawing as we saw the Madonna. I just you put it, I mean, these, I just love these details because they're so good at zooming on. Over, of course, remember the stubble, things like that. And that one, just a technical thing showing the business of a silver point. Now, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if that's silver or just a metal point. I don't think it makes that much difference. It's the paper itself that would matter. But as I think I said, you know, this is almost as much of a self portrait of an artist as faces, because it's just that kind of on-the-job business going beautifully done with dirty fingernails and things. Uh, I've said six times already, that doesn't necessarily make it good art, but for me it sure as hell helps. And then just back to this little guy here. But when you're not looking at him with all this little sort of spastic joy that's going on, uh, just the, the... And he's not really, as we saw, as kind of fanatically detailed as Jan the Knight was, but there's lovely bits of the materials of, of a sleeve, things like that, are so nicely done. And even again, the, the scallop, even the scallop head there, that's a fair bit of extra work, hard labor, so you think you might take a shortcut and just have nice smooth edges, but no. And then that's hard to beat. Um, and as I said, there's, there is a, there's got to be a connection somehow, I mean, it's just the two figures facing each other, the, trinity of lights behind the framing of the scene, the high up scene, the character standing here, the river leading back. Uh, there's just too much coincidence for it to be coincidence. So somehow he had, I, I honestly don't think he would have seen this, because it would have been in Roland's private house. It's highly unlikely that Roger would have gotten there. Um, so it's just maybe there was a drawing that somebody else had done. Well, uh, you see, Again, the, the frustration is that nobody's bothering to write about these people because they're not that interesting. Uh, and so when people start to collect anecdotes about them, very often it's three or four generations later that they're just picking up almost legends by that point. Uh, so there's no sort of daily account. Nobody would keep a diary or anything like that. Again, you have to wonder if somebody like Roger would be able to read or write. Because it just wasn't part of your necessary training to be an artist, to be a craftsman. Uh, but this wonderful image of, of Chancellor Nicholas Rona that we looked at in a fair bit of detail last week. Uh, but the other thing, as I mentioned, was that I mean, it, almost, it is kind of like a, a flat stage set. And if you have a painted stage set, and if you haven't, you should, because it's quite an interesting thing to do. Uh, you tend to kind of cut corners a bit because there's no point in putting in tons of details. So you just thin, thin out all the bits and pieces. That's a little bit like that here with the... A connection, remember as I said, that million mile distance, you can go off almost into infinity. And don't forget the Raja who have double the size as the, of Van Eyck's picture as well. Uh, so all of that, and then this kind of 
another schematic way of showing the little town scene with little anecdotal bits and pieces. Uh, the schematic way of showing the water, that's rather nice. Um, and then just the flowers themselves would become part of an overall flat patterning. And so I think that's that. And what I was showing you at the end of Monday's class was the um, well, Adam and Eve there, but also the idea of um, attribution. And, and again, I don't want to get bogged down in it because it's very much for specialists and, and for us level. I think it's just who cares who did these things. Sometimes it's just the beauty of the images themselves. Uh, but that one I showed you, I think that's rather nice because, you know, this picture that was discovered, somebody just painted black all over the background. It's just a fragment, this reading Magdalene, which is in the National Gallery of London. And it, again, it's very kind of focused, the concentration, it's the sort of figure you climb inside because she's so devoted to the business of hand, reading the good book, that sort of thing. Uh, but then the fact that they've discovered separately the two heads, one of Joseph and one of Catherine of Alexandria over here. But this is a kind of mock-up of the... the did, I did, did I mention that the, the, the expert on people like Paul Fan comes from the same little tiny village in Scotland as I do? Mm -hmm. One of the odds. This is by his sister, um, who I think is the art teacher in the local school. Uh, and she, again, presumably in collaboration with her brother, came up with the idea of what the, uh, the overall composition might have looked like. Again, that, this, if, if it's Italian, it's called a sacra conversazione, a holy conversation, where you put in a bunch of saints who could never have been together in real life, and you just have them not having an actual conversation, but they're just kind of there. So I'm not sure who the bishop might have been. Uh, but Catherine of Alexandria, uh, John the Baptist, Mary, Christ child, John the Evangelist, remember we saw, that was his pose that we saw there, curling up, and that one. Uh, and then Joseph over here, and Mary, Mary Magdalene, of course. And as I said, I, I, who knows why only that part remains. Maybe it was Protestants who destroyed the rest of it, but just happened to like that one figure. Maybe there was a fire, maybe part of the church fell down. All these things could, could have happened. But I mean, this is a really nice head of Joseph, I think. 